Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to talk about confidence and margin of error. We're going to ask the question, are you more likely to be struck by lightning in a given year or to exceed the exit polls in an election by the calculated margin of error? To answer that question, we need to understand what confidence and margin of error refer to. One of the examples we'll look at comes from Richard Charnin's blog, where he discusses the probability of election fraud. But before we get to his data, let's take a look at a simpler example. Suppose that we have candidate A and candidate B in an election. The actual results are that candidate A wins 55% of the vote and candidate B wins 45%, meaning that the difference, A minus B, is positive 10. Candidate A has exceeded candidate B by 10 percentage points. Now suppose that in that election, before we actually know the results, there's an exit poll that occurs as voters are leaving the voting facility. So we're randomly selecting a thousand voters. We're told that the exit poll has a 95% confidence level, corresponding to a 6% margin of error on the difference A minus B. So what does this mean? What it means is that we expect for the difference to be 10 percentage points. But if we allow for an error of up to 6 percentage points, in other words, if we were to run this exit poll 100 times, then 95 of those times, the result would give us a difference between 4 and 16, or within 6 percentage points of the actual difference. The other 5 out of 100 would be below or above. Specifically, 2.5 out of 100 would have results above, and about 2.5 out of 100 would result in a difference that's lower than the actual difference by more than the margin of error. This means that for a single contest, the probability of exceeding the margin of error, having a difference greater than 16, is 0.025, or 25 times out of 1,000. Let's look at some actual results from a Democratic primary in 2016. In Richard Charnin's blog, he discusses the results of the Democratic primary in 2016 in the Georgia contest. We see that Clinton was predicted to win 64.8% of the votes, while Sanders was predicted to win 33.8%. This means that there was a difference of 31.0% between the two. With a 95% confidence interval, the margin the margin of error would be 5.18%. The results reported by the New York Times were a little bit different, which is to be expected. Clinton had 71.33%, Sanders 28.16%, with a difference of 43.2%, much greater than the 31% difference that was expected based on the exit polls. But was it significantly different? Well, according to the exit poll, we expected 31.08, but we had a margin of error of 5.18. So the most we would expect the difference to be would be 36.26. The actual difference turned out to be 43.2, which means that the difference exceeded what we expected the difference to be by a positive 7.0, or Clinton beat the odds by 7 percentage points. So what's the probability of this happening? Well, as before, we're looking at a 95% confidence that we're going to be within the expected values. In this case, the highest possible expected value would have been 36.26, but we're way up here somewhere. So again, if we're 95% confident, 95 out of 100 or 0.95 probability that we're in this zone here in the middle, then that leaves 0.025, 2.5% probability that we're above that zone. So in our contest in Georgia, we exceeded the margin of error. There's less than a 0 0.025 probability of that happening, but this isn't suspect. In fact, 25 out of a thousand times it's going to happen. Another question that we might ask looking at all of these results is what's the probability that eight different times out of the 18 contests that are listed here, the results would exceed the margin of error. We know that each time individually there's a 0.025 probability that this will occur. What about the times that it doesn't occur? 
if we break this down by the probability of exceeding versus the probability of not exceeding everything else, then we have for each of the cases where we didn't exceed the margin of error a 0.975 chance of that happening. If we multiply all of these together, we get the probability of this exact scenario where the first contest exceeds, the second and third do not, the fourth, fifth, and sixth exceed the margin of error, and so on. But that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for the probability of 8 of 18, any 8. So the way that we're going to calculate that is you're going to count the number of different ways to pick 8 contests from 18 and then multiply it by that product, the probability of any one of those outcomes with 8 contests that exceed the margin of error. So the way we calculate the number of combinations where you have 8 contests turn out to exceed the margin of error out of 18 is called C of 18 choose 8 and you can actually do this calculation on your calculator or with a formula and then we're going to multiply that times the 0.025 8 times because there were 8 contests where we had that probability come up and then the 0.975 10 times and when we do that it turns out to be about 5 out of 1 billion so there's only a 5 out of 1 billion chance that if the exit polls were done correctly and the um, election results were reported accurately that we would have any 8 out of 18 contests turn out to exceed the margin of error. To give you an idea of how small of a number that is, your probability of being struck by lightning in any given year is about 840 out of a billion. Your probability of winning $1 million in the Powerball, which is the second prize, is 85 out of a billion. And by comparison, for exit polls to exceed the margin of error 8 of 18 times is 5 out of a billion. Not even as good a chance as winning Powerball or being struck by lightning in a given year. I hope this video was helpful to you. If it was, please remember to like it. You can also visit me on Facebook or follow me on Twitter.